Kellerman Show. Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio. The Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio. What's up, nerds? ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker. Lamar Jackson or Kyle Allen? Or as Raj spells it, Lammer Jackson. <laughs> you, you ain't never heard of you ain't never heard or of Kyle cousin, Allen. Lammer? Huh. Boy. Yeah, it's cousin Lammer? Yeah, no doubt. Like 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 Hollywood <laughs> Brown and Antonio <laughs> Brown, right? <laughs> Lammer Jackson. <laughs> Lamar Jackson or Kyle Allen is the question. See who Keyshawn would choose in a few minutes. He's coming on the Max Kellerman Show, as he normally does. You can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Of course, you can hear Key and Jay Will and Zubin in the mornings right here on ESPN Radio. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. All All guests join me. On the Shell Penzo performance line. There is so much to read. I try to rush through it, Raj, and it just winds up taking longer. By the way, if not the Nets, where would the best fit for Harden be? And if the answer is Philadelphia, would you trade Ben Simmons for him? Or will Daryl Morey is the better question. I'm going to get to that in a bit. Be a part of Max Kellerman Nation on the Dr. Pepper call-in line. ESPN Nation is presented by Dr. Pepper. The college football season's heating up. And so is your favorite Dr. Pepper-loving college football town, Fansville. Head to a store near you to treat your inner college football fan to an ice-cold 20-ounce Dr. Pepper today. But first, it's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Look, I was talking a lot about how the Washington game was a trap game for the Steelers that I thought they'd avoid. I thought they'd avoid the trap because they played so poorly against Baltimore. Baltimore's backups because of COVID, no Lamar Jackson. And Tomlin chewed him out in the media well enough that I thought, all right, they're going to play well. And they did play well early against Washington. They had a two-touchdown lead. And Ben Roethlisberger, I think it was on 112 games. I'm doing this from memory because his stat was everywhere uh, a couple days ago. In 112 games, Roethlisberger's 109-2-1, I believe, in the Roethlisberger era. That's, that's what the Steelers are when up by two touchdowns at any point in the game. Think about that. But they collapsed down the stretch and they lost. Why? Well, number one, the Steelers don't have a run game, which is going to be a problem. They don't get any run blocking. And two, they were playing their third, their third game in 13 days. They were on a short week. It was after a Ravens game. There was an emotional letdown, et cetera, et cetera. They got tired and they wore down. So similarly, I was looking for the Ravens to bounce back against the Cowboys, not nearly the trap game that Washington was for the Steelers, mainly because Cowboys aren't as good as Washington. And, and, and the Ravens were not coming off as grueling a schedule as the Steelers. However, and, and by the way, the Ravens had a lot to play for. They lost three in a row. You can't lose four in a row, the last one being to the Cowboys. That's, that's the end of the season. They're trying to catch the Colts or the Titans in the AFC to, to slip into that, that um, final wild card slot. And you, you can't be 6-6 six and six having lost four straight and, and won to the Cowboys. No way. And they didn't. They won. But, like, similar to Pittsburgh, it's not. it was under a little trying circumstances. Remember how Cam and the Patriots looked when Cam got back from COVID? Pretty bad, right? You could get a brain fog. Who knows? But I was watching. Okay, how's Lamar look? Look really good. You can say whatever you want about the Cowboys' run defense. They give up 160 yards a game, except except the Ravens got almost 300 yards. They doubled what the Cowboys normally give up on the ground. And yes, Lamar missed some passes. He also threw a dime to, to, to Hollywood Brown, to Marquise Brown. So, like, you know, this is who Lamar Jackson has, is. He has plateaued as a guy who can like, connect on some nice passes, will miss others, and can run. Can he be more than that? Well, we'll find out the rest of this season and especially if he makes the playoffs but what we saw was a Ravens team that defensively they didn't look great Ravens have a good defense very good defense even through the losing streak the only team they gave up a lot of points to were the Titans 30 points to the Titans and nowadays that's not the end of the world even but generally they're holding teams to pretty you know to 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 under 20 points and and you know they lost not only three in a row coming into the Cowboys game but four of their last five and but they in in that it, because they played Pittsburgh twice, but in there was a win against the Colts. Gave up ten points to the Colts and beat, beat them pretty good. 
So I thought I thought Lamar looked like Lamar again. And, and, and Baltimore basically looked like Baltimore. Don't forget, it was a short week, and they're coming off COVID. John Harbaugh, Baltimore Ravens head coach, on Lamar Jackson after the game. Well, the one thing you do know about Lamar, you're going to get everything he's got, you know, and that's really all you can ask for. Uh, he's going to give you uh, whatever he has, and it turned out that he had a lot tonight, and that was good to see. I don't think you could predict that. He came out to practice. He looked good in practice. He, uh, he was uh, strong and healthy. And um, I'm just impressed with the fact that he was on top of the game plan so well. He'd been studying, obviously, the whole time he's away, and he played a great football game. Yeah, Lamar is a really likable guy. You can see his teammates really like playing with him and for him and want to make plays for him. The whole question with him, and by the way, we got Keyshawn coming up in a few minutes, but the whole question with him, and I doubted him coming out of college. The question with him, and, 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 and for that matter, Josh Allen, and I'll, I'll say Mitch Trubisky, you know, the athletic guys. In Allen's case, he's not as fast as the other two, but, I mean, no one's as fast as Lamar, like on earth, basically. But, but, um, but Trubisky can really run. And I know they're not all from the same draft class. But um, Josh Allen, I mean, I mean the running quarterbacks and the, and the athletic quarterback, Josh Allen it, can move and has a huge arm, but wasn't super accurate. And coming out of college, I thought, I don't know, man. I don't believe in him. And I did not believe in Lamar. And I did not believe in Trubisky. Trubisky proved me right. Josh Allen is proving me wrong, boy. I mean, he has an offensive line now. He has receivers. He has everything he needs. And Lamar Jackson, I know it sounds funny because he won the MVP last year, but the jury is still out. I'm not saying he's not good. He obviously, you win the MVP in the NFL. You're obviously very, very good. But the jury is still out in terms of his trajectory. Early on, he was an extremely accurate passer for his age. But that doesn't mean that his trajectory will take him into being an extremely accurate passer for the rest of his career or when he hits his prime. And so you're charting these things constantly and thinking, is he ahead of the curve? Is he behind the curve? He started out ahead of the curve. He showed some improvement, and he's regressed this season. He, he, the, the, the pace in terms of his improvement is not where it should be. In fact, if anything, there's been some regression in his passing. That was straight talk, wireless, no contract, no compromise. So it's official. Jalen Hurts will start for the Philadelphia Eagles. Is Hurts the answer in Philly? Faces uh, the best defense in the NFL right now, and the Saints coming up. Dan Orlovsky appeared here on the Max Kellerman Show yesterday. I'm, I've been Wentz's biggest critic. I was one of his biggest supporters when he was great. And then when he stopped being great, I started raising the alarm, sounding the alarm, like certain, you know, raising certain issues about him. And then as I saw them not improving, I started getting louder about it. And as I saw people like Dan Orlovsky defending him in the media, I got even louder about it because I felt it was actually... Um, giving Carson Wentz cover to continue making the mistakes he made. And finally, it was undeniable, and Coach had to sit him. And here's Orlovsky yesterday here on the Max Kellerman Show. Boy, what bothers me about Orlovsky is when we argue about Wentz, this guy can break down video like nobody's business. So if I'm seeing regression or if I saw regression, he saw it too. What's going on? I think I – think I think Wentz has pictures of Orlovsky somewhere. Here is Dan Orlovsky, ESPN football analyst extraordinaire, on why Carson Wentz had to get sat down. Carson Wentz opened this door with poor play. You know, he's had very few highs and way too many lows this season. So his play gave the organization the, we had no other choice but to make this move, essentially like an ultimatum, right? Because he wasn't playing good football. That is absolutely true, but it, he hasn't been playing good football in a long time, including at the end of last year. He played very poorly against the NFC East, and they got lucky in wins. He turned the ball over on third down in the fourth quarter, and they would just get lucky and, and, and you know, pounce on the ball. They, you know, they wound up in the Eagles' possession again, and they go on to beat a bunch of terrible teams. Barely, by the way, by the skin of their teeth. And everyone else in the division beat all the teams that Carson Wentz was beating worse than he did, right? These sad sack quarterbacks back then. But anyway, it's not just that Wentz has sat down now 
because Hertz gives him the best chance to win, though he probably does at this point. You got to sit Wentz, as I said. You drafted a quarterback in the second round when your franchise quarterback, supposed franchise quarterback, had a $100 million contract and uh, uh, was 27 years old. You drafted a guy in the second round. Why? To run the Wildcat? Get out of here. It's an insurance policy against Wentz, Wentz's not only injury, but regression. If a guy gets hurt, you'll be terrible. You'll draft first overall or, or high up overall. You'll get another quarterback. No. They wanted to develop Hurts in the event of Carson Wentz's regression. And if that's because of injury, okay. I don't think Carson Wentz has moved the same since he got back from injury. Sure enough, he regressed to the point where they can't play him anymore. Wentz is unplayable right now. Hurts is going to get a shot. And he's going to get a shot for the rest of this year. You have to give him a shot for the rest of this year because you need to know if he can be your quarterback. Or do you need to spend your first round pick, which is going to be a really good pick this year because of how bad the Eagles record is going to be, on a quarterback? That's why you got to start Hurts. Can the Eagles win with Hurts? That's a question for Keyshawn Johnson coming up on the Max Kellerman Show. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Raj, I'm going to be taking calls throughout this show. I'm going to get them in on all kinds of segments. You have no idea. I don't know, Max. You keep saying that every Lots day. You keep saying it. The people are yeah. hip to it, man. You going to do it now? I'm going to do it. You going to do it? I'm going to do it. What's up? And, and here's all the right. thing. I'm going to. And here's the thing. You know I just love the sound of my you own do. voice for some reason. And here's the thing. There's a lot to get into not only in the NFL but in the NBA. Because um, Derek Bodner of The Athletic – brought up a point, uh, I saw it on Twitter, that actually started changing the way I thought about how the six, whether or not the Sixers should deal MB, uh, sorry, uh, Simmons for Harden. And I want to get into that a little later, but there's a lot to unpack. 888 say ESPN. Keyshawn Johnson joins us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Key! I'll d- oh, no key yet. Okay, I got it. Got it. Raj just highlighted the part that says Keyshawn Johnson. So, Raj, I naturally assumed (laughs) that he was there. I'm going to ask Keyshawn Johnson all kinds of questions, guys. I'm going to ask him if he'd take Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. Ooh. I'll tell you what my answer is in a second. Remember, he's come on. He's come on. Give Key another minute. He's come on with us before, and he's defended Lamar Jackson. Remember, because the early thing was the narrative was – he beats everyone else, but when the lights are brightest, he can't win. And, and Key's always said it's too early to judge said, him, Lamar Jackson. So I have a feeling where he might go on that. I started that narrative about the lights. Don't tell me about the <laughs> lights. I noticed it's not, just, it's not just that he can't win in the playoffs or he can't beat good teams. I thought that was not true. I'd seen Lamar Jackson beat right. good teams. Don't tell me about he can't beat good teams. He couldn't beat the Steelers with mm-hmm. Roethlisberger. That's a must-win right. game if you're the Ravens. In the playoffs at all, that's, you got to do it, you know. Or the Chiefs, AFC. If, if you're in the AFC North, you must, and you're the Ravens, you must beat the Steelers with Roethlisberger. He couldn't do it. If you're in the AFC, you must beat the Chiefs. He couldn't do it. He's lost every game. And you got to win in the playoffs. He couldn't do it. Now, it's a small sample size, but it's starting to get larger in those kind of games, right? And I noticed, yeah, he could beat a lot of, like, he was almost undefeated against all other teams. And he played Seattle. He played a bunch of good teams in the last two years. So it's not about, well, defenses have figured him out exclusively. My worry was he couldn't do it under pressure. Who would you take, Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson? Can the Eagles win with Jalen Hurts? Are the Seahawks still really Super Bowl contenders? And did you hear what Jerry Jones had to say about Dak Prescott. Ooh, Stephen A and I got into it on first take today about that. Stephen A was all over Jerry Jones. I'm defending Jerry Jones on this. Jerry said about Dak. Well, we're going to get into that in a little while. Um, I'm going to start by telling you that I'll take Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson. I think Josh Allen's an elite quarterback. I don't believe that about Lamar. I think Josh Allen's the kind of quarterback you can win a Super Bowl with. He's accurate down the field. He's big, he's strong, he's mobile, and he's accurate down the field. 
He's gotten better every year of his career. He's on an excellent team. They're well coached. They have an offensive line. They have receivers. They can play defense. All that stuff helps the quarterback. But it like it, it it's like compounding success. For example, you take two kids. They're equally bright. One goes to Stanford. One goes to community college, right? By the end of the four years, you might say the one who went to Stanford's smarter. It's not that they have more innate uh, ability. It's not that if you would have taken the kid who went to community college and put him in Stanford or her in Stanford, they wouldn't have been, you know, just as smart. The fact is they didn't get the same training. And as they get older, you know, they, they, they lose those kind of compounding advantages. It's the same thing in football. If a quarterback's in a bad situation, it's not that they can't resurrect their career as Tannehill did with a change of scenery. It's just that mo much more often what happens is they never fulfill their potential because they, they miss out developing in key development years. Whereas the quarterbacks who are protected by a line, whose coach is very good, who do develop rapport with receivers, gain confidence, gain experience in big moments, gain playoff experience and success, and it makes them better quarterbacks. And Josh Allen's in that situation right now. And by the way, not that Lamar's not. Lamar's also in that situation. He's just not developing as a passer to the extent that Josh Allen has. Steven in Jersey are on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. I, radio, I told you I was going to get the say, calls right. I feel like the Eagles should play it out with Jalen Hurts, see what we got in him. I don't blame – I mean, I blame Howie Roseman for passing up A.J., D.K., and Justin Jefferson this past year. We need wide receivers. They need offensive yep. linemen. They need DBs. They need linebackers. They need a lot. Uh, Wentz don't have no help. Wentz is definitely digressed, but it's not Ah, his wait. Stay right I, there, I Steven. The don't drop, Steven. Steven, don't, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Donovan McNabb needed a lot of help a lot of seasons, too, and he didn't have that much sometimes. He was paid like a franchise quarterback, and when you are paid $100 million, when you're paid like top three or five contracts at the position, at the quarterback position in the NFL, you are meant to paper over some of those to compensate for some of the flaws well, in the team. Do you always in the NFL, NFL got to – Alshon you, Jeffries, Jalen, Jalen Rager hasn't really been anything that – Justin Jefferson, I, 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 I blame Howie Roseman. I blame Howie Miles Roseman. Sanders is a stud. Hold on. Miles Sanders is a stud. Uh, he has tight ends. He has two excellent tight ends, and he had them last year. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm not trying to hear all that. The bottom line, keep Steven right there. The bottom line is Wentz is taking a lot of the money that could be spent elsewhere. Do I agree that Roseman's got to go? Yup. Roseman didn't package that second round pick to go get DeAndre Hopkins. Roseman didn't use it to move up to trade to, to get CeeDee Lamb. But he that felt that he had to use it on a quarterback because Wentz had regressed. And he had to hedge against Wes, Wentz regressing more, which has happened, Stephen in Jersey. Go ahead. You, then you got to blame Howie. Howie has to go. Howie has made too many mistakes. I agree. Too many mistakes. You pass up on too many wide receivers that have been beasting in the NFL right now. Justin yes. Jefferson is the latest one. DK Metcalf just literally. I agree. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So we're on the same page about receivers and Howie Roseman. You're right. Roseman's got to go. Peterson's got to go. Wentz can't go because you can't move the deal. But I'm with you there. But the point is this. Don't blame that on Wentz's regression or Wentz's regression on, on no receivers. Stop. Wentz has no internal clock. He holds the ball too long. He forces stupid throws. His mechanics are backwards at this point. His decision making is awful. He he I mean, like I, that's not because Howie Roseman didn't draft Jefferson. It's not. And Rieger, by the way, Rieger, whatever. Remember when you heard about his time in the forty? I agree with you about Roseman. Roseman's got to go. Anyone near this stink pile has got to go. That includes Peterson. That includes Roseman. And if you can get rid of him, that includes Carson Wentz. You know, as a Giants fan, I shouldn't even be saying this. I should be like, you know what? You should keep Wentz. Yeah, he can do it. Yeah, you can rehabilitate him somehow. And as a Giants fan, I'd be laughing and laughing. But I have a responsibility, Raj. Years ago, I did a New York show. And I did an L.A. show. This is a national show. Raj, I'm not just a host for uh, the people no. in my state, mm -mm. my home state. I'm a host a for all for the, of the American the people. people. A host for the people, those who voted for me and against me. I have to be a host for all of them. And even if, even if the Eagles fans are mad, I'm just telling you the truth. And here's the thing. 
the real Eagles fans who are really paying attention, they know that I'm right, and they let me know it too. You know how the Eagles fans know. Eagles fans are not forgiving, just like blindly uh, uh, cheering on a guy because he's on their team. If you stink, Eagles fans let you know. News from Max Kellerman Nation. Steven just hit us up on the Dr. Pepper call-in line. Lamar or Kyle Allen going to hear from Keyshawn Johnson next Twas the night sorry the end of the year and it's been less than fun but as your business grows you need to hire for 2021 make hiring much faster and easier most would agree by going to ziprecruiter.com slash max to try ZipRecruiter for free four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter say they get a quality candidate within the very first day right now you can try ZipRecruiter absolutely free at ziprecruiter.com slash max that's me that's ziprecruiter.com slash max just to be clear happy hiring to all and to all a great new year lamar or kyle allen is key there The Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, and Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker. This ESPN Plus, there's such a delay nowadays that I try to blow my nose and it comes back with me and, and the tissue is shoved up my nose. We get caught out there nowadays. You can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. If you're the 76ers, you trading Bed Simmons for... For, for James Harden, I, I've changed my tune about this one. I'm going to get into it. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. Pennzoil synthetic motor oils are made from natural gas. It gives you unbeatable engine protection. The proof is in the Pennzoil based on sequence 4A wear test using SAE 5W30. Keyshawn Johnson now joins me. Key, what's, what's going on? Really, yo? So let's start right. Let's jump right in. Key, this is what I'm saying. You tell me if I'm wrong. I want to hear your argument. I'm saying I'll take Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson. To that, you say what? Mm, that's a tough one. I, I, I like Lamar. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little more, I don't know, Lamar is more dangerous to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I know I, I probably, I'll probably – I'll probably mess with Lamar. I'll mess See, with Lamar. I'll take Lamar. Here's my here's my issue with La- here's my issue yeah, with Lamar. Tell me. Lamar, Trubisky, Josh Allen, some others too. I, I I had questions about when they got I mean you have questions about everyone, but especially dudes who you know primarily oh my god, Josh Allen has a big arm. Yeah, but can he read defenses? Is he accurate? Oh, Trubisky can outrun linebackers. Yeah, but can he throw the ball accurately down the field? Oh, my God, Lamar Jackson's such an athlete. Right, but how's he going to develop as a passer, right? Um, to me, Trubisky, the answer is no, he didn't do it. Lamar, obviously, the answer was yes. He, he won MVP last year. And Josh Allen, to me, now the answer is yes. But here's the thing, Key. Lamar Jackson kept, like, was a much better passer than people realized by age 21, 22, whatever. But you got to track that trajectory. He has not developed on, on the, in the kind of way that you might project a year and a half ago, let's say, or a year ago. Meantime, Josh Allen keeps getting better and better and better. So, I'll, like, give me the guy who's now 24, Josh Allen, who every year gets better, and at this point I think he's a top three quarterback in the AFC, versus the guy who, like, wait, is he going to get there? Is he going to get there? Is he there? No, and now he's regressing. I'll, I'll take the guy who's still going forward. I don't, I don't necessarily know that he's regressing. I just think that what you're seeing is something different. He, he hit 60 per, 66% of his passes last year. You know what he's hitting this year? Mm-hmm. 65 So he's a percent. 65 so or 55? he's a percent down from a year ago. Gotcha. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, and so yeah, you but, saw yep. a lot of splash play last year. But what I would love to say to you, Max, is why do, why do you feel the need that quarterbacks have got to throw the ball all over the lot to be successful and win? When you win in games the way you well, win and rushing way. for 300 yards and being a part of that, what difference does it make? If you if – you, if you, I agree. If By you, the way, if, if, Key, if I agree. College, if he would have been – college football – for many years, all Nebraska did was run. You didn't hear nobody scream and holler, oh, they mm-hmm. need to throw, they need to throw, when other teams across the country was throwing. That's how they won. 
No, and no, but win, I, I, I'm with win. it. Key, I'm with that. If, they, if you win, you win. But here is the thing. Come playoff time, when it tightens up, Lamar has folded. The first time, he, 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 it was terrible in the first half. He got better as the game went on, but it was still a very he bad performance. He folded. The kid, and, the and kid then the next had time, a handful of games under his belt. Like, he's a, he, he doesn't okay, even have a mustache yet. Okay, but what about last year in the playoffs? Yet. Like, what are you talking about, he folded? Yeah, what about last year in the playoffs, Key? It's his second, Key, what about last year in the playoffs? second year. Ah, so what we've seen is, and then, then, and then this really, year, while really, the completion percentage you're really saying is a little down, they've had year, less, less success. Why? Because he got inserted into the lineup late. Uh, yeah. So, all right, that's fine. So if he's winning in the playoffs running the ball, I'm with it. But if he's not and teams are challenging him to, to throw it down the field and he can't, what, then I'm not with it. It's that simple. That's all it is. Is fall too far behind. That's what the offense mm -hmm. can't do. And so uh, many offenses is that way, not just Baltimore and Lamar. If Tennessee falls behind, it's they struggle to come from behind. That's just the way the system mm -hmm. goes. Just like Arizona. Yeah, but, but, Arizona Cardinals throw the ball all over the lot. If they have too many three and outs, you know what that does? It kills the defense. That's why people don't see, like I'm, the okay. air raid That's fine. on defense. Yeah, all right, that, that's, the fun. that's fine. That's fine. No problem there. Like, you know, and Ryan Tannehill's a good quarterback. I think Lamar Jackson's a good quarterback. But I wouldn't call either one elite. In other words, like, if I had my pick of quarterbacks it's around the league, I have, like, Max, a top three pick in the NCAA. Though. I'm not taking Tannehill Max, or Lamar. different. He's elite in his own way, Jackson is. He's different than what your eyes oh, okay. have seen for the last 20 years. It's just he's a different no, type that's of QB. Doesn't make it doesn't right. make it right, doesn't make it wrong. He's just a different style quarterback and they're winning differently with that style. Okay. The best quarterback in the AFC is Patrick Absolutely. Mahomes, right? You comfortable Absolutely. saying that? Okay. I'll take Deshaun Watson second. Do you Absolutely. agree? I take Josh Allen third. Yeah. Like, I, I'm yeah. not taking Lamar third. I'm taking Josh Allen third. That's what I'm saying. That's like a big take, change now I in terms take, of the perception of the league. I take Ben Roethlisberger before I take Josh Allen in a heartbeat. I, and before I would take what? Lamar Jackson, I'd take Ben Roethlisberger. I, ben Roethlisberger, 38 years old, and his play has it gone a little bit backwards 30, recently, I don't right? care if he's 100. Josh Allen's 24. You can't he just argue threw, with huh? his play. You can't argue Who, with Roethlisberger? it. I'm not talking about taking for the next 50 years. He's had a years. good season. I'm talking about taking him based on the way he, that he's played this year. He's good. He's had a good season. Allen's played better than Roethlisberger so far this I, season. He's had more excellent games than Roethlisberger. I don't know that to be true. And I don't even have a statistic in front of me. But I, I remember Josh Allen having about a three- to four-game stretch where you scratch your head and say, well, what is this? Right after – Right after Dan no, Orlovsky started talking about he was an MVP, he had about a three-game stretch where you said, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, where he wasn't wait great. He did. But then he's been great again. But he, I, I agree. But then ben look, he's top. Burger have a three-game stretch this year? Yeah, yeah, but I've seen him, like, recently Roethlisberger's play has been okay. It's been acceptable, but it hasn't been stellar. Not wait, recently. Matt, Let's be this honest. This is in boxing. And, and, I'm reaching. Yeah. No more jabs. <laughs> It's, it's the No, you don't reach with a jab. It depends. Do you throw a heavy jab or not? All right, let's move on. Jerry Jones comes out and talks about Dak Prescott. Stephen A. and I were arguing about this on oh, the air today. I did not take offense. Of course. I did not take offense to what Jerry Jones said. I feel like Jerry Jones said about Dak, whether he's right or wrong, because there's a lot of people who say you're no more likely to be hurt outside the pocket than inside, than, 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 you know, in the pocket. But – Jerry was saying, look, it's my fault. I've held Dak back. I don't think he should be running so much because it's dangerous. He points to Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz got hurt running the ball. He points to Dak Prescott. Same thing. He said he needs to be more like Russell Wilson, who knows how to somehow protect himself real well when he runs outside the pocket. What did you think about Jerry's comments on Dak? I, I mean, he has to do what he needs to do to protect himself, but he also has to play the way he knows how to play. Um, one of the problems with quarterbacks is you start trying to change their habits, and when you do that, it screws them up. You just got to let them be who they are and let them evolve into what, you know, whatever it is that they do well. Don't take what they the do well The best version away. of whatever they're going to yeah, become. You can't, you can't yeah. mess with no. that. They get caught up in that, 
much like you, you get caught up in what you've seen for the last 20 years in your eyes and not what it really is. No, well, I, I, you're saying that about me. I don't think that's actually well, true about true, me, but I think there's a good example. Say Lamar Jackson is just okay. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what you see. I, say, I didn't say he's just okay. He won the MVP last year. I'm saying they're th- the, the three best quarterbacks in the AFC do not include Lamar Jackson right now. I think they do include uh, Josh Allen. But what you're saying about quarterbacks and when you try to change them too much, to me, you know what the best example of that is? is Colin Kaepernick. They tried to change Kaepernick so much that they changed him out of being a great quarterback and into a guy who was barely a starter. And then the whole league changed. And if he were playing right now, I don't think they'd try to change him that much. I don't think you got to remember. Did they try to change him? I don't remember. It was so. Yeah. It's been, it's been yeah. Like there was all this effort. Em- <laughs> yeah. 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 It has been at this point, unfortunately. But 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 like I, I don't think every the next guy has to look like the last guy. You don't have to play like the last guy. I'm saying that. Lamar's play, while great last year, um, this season, like when you got a guy that young, you're looking to chart his trajectory, right? Is he getting better? Is he getting better? It doesn't mean if he takes a step back, he won't take two forward next year. I agree, he could. He could. But as age 21, you're like, damn, for a 21-year-old quarterback, that dude is accurate. Age 22, okay, there's improvement there, and he was already accurate for his age to begin with. Age 23, step but I back. Never, but I to never me, confused him. So I never confused can... Lamar Jackson to be Steve Young. I never would. I never would do that. I never would sit there and say his accuracy needs to be off the charts like Steve Young. You got to know what you got. It's the Cam Newton argument. And it's what do you the, got in Lamar? You have a dynamic what do you got in Lamar? athlete that can do some stuff that can put you in position to get to a Super Bowl and even win a Super Bowl with his style. He's only in his third year. So you year. can win a Super Bowl with Lamar? Yeah. Absolutely. Keyshawn Johnson says you can win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. I think I agree with that, but not this Lamar Jackson. Keyshawn Johnson, ladies and gentlemen, check him out. Thanks, Key. On Keyshawn and Jay Will and Zubin in the mornings here on ESPN Radio. Does Josh Allen have a shot at the MVP? No doubt. Coming up, you know what's not healthy? Stressing about and save both time and money. Learn more at Progressive.com. We're going to get right down to it. We got you covered. Let me tell you what I think of you. No doubt. Uh, all right, man. All right. That's Let's right. get that money. There we go. We got two. Play. Oh, this is no, not. I get money. We got both deads playing. Read John Money. There we go. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Michigan's been in the news. Michigan football all week. Of course, the game against Ohio State canceled. However, Michigan should extend Jim Harbaugh. Nah, son. Are you, I mean, I, I wish I could say no doubt to the nah, son. Nah. You know what I mean? Like, there needs to be nah. something stronger than nah, son. He's been a disaster. Let's face it. Michigan, listen, Michigan fans have an overblown sense of their own program. But what's Harbaugh yeah. done? Try beating your rival yeah. one time. You have this huge advantage in recruiting and everything. He's been bad. It's not been good. All right, Gotta all right. Hey, Dick Buck has turned 78 today. I don't know if you're like me, Max. We used to grow up watching highlights of certain players back in the day. Dog, his course, highlight NFL films. would be strictly illegal today. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Back then, they actually used to take <laughs> weapons onto the field. <laughs> you, you'd see like Buckus used to used to take you know he, he'd have like he'd have weapons his, on the field that looked like the last scene from Gangs of New York. Weapon. And if you went out of bounds, that didn't mean nothing to him. You got out of bounds, you had to go four steps or you get popped, nothing. Boy. <laughs> That's right. Nothing. No, the the rule by the rules of today's game. I mean, first of all, he yeah, would have had yeah. to adapt, right? But by the rules uh, of today's game, he'd make a. Uh, Vontez Perfect would look like a <laughs> choir boy next to the, I mean, come on, the stuff they used to do. And by the way, do you remember that scene from uh, Any Given Sunday where the dude's oh, eyeball yeah, pops man. out, right? Because, like, they're, they're, they're get, like, they used to do stuff. <laughs> like, they used to, when you hear stories about what would even happen oh, under no. the pile, I mean, I'm, stuff yeah. still goes on today, but it's like, oh, what? You wouldn't do you wouldn't that do to it, your worst enemy. Right, hey, yeah. Quick on this one. Josh Allen has a shot at the MVP. Oh. Nah, son. Nah. Um, Josh Allen's had a great season. I just said he's an elite quarterback. I put him third in the AFC behind Mahomes okay. and Deshaun Watson. And, and and by the way, Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen, it'll be interesting. Let's see what happens by the end of the year. But, uh, dude, Patrick Mahomes' team has one loss. He has thrown 
31 touchdowns against two uh, interceptions. Uh, uh, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is kind of like Jordan in the sense that, you know, it, people always like just it gets boring saying the same guy again. I guess so you bring someone else up. You're just going to get your feelings hurt. Don't do it. Don't do that to other players and compare them to Mahomes. The only dude you can compare to Mahomes right, is Aaron right. Rodgers. And, and even then, so I don't nah, think son. he wins that. All right, check I it out. Mahomes we'll does. hear, yeah. we'll hear nah, Christmas son. music on the Max Kellerman show this month. Go ahead. Hit him with it, Matt Lott. Hit him with it. No hit him with it. This doubt. is what Max wants. Let's hear. <laughs> no? I wouldn't right, choose it. I love a lot of Christmas hit music. Hit, hit him with this that is real not stuff, Matt Lott. Yeah. In Hollis, Queens. In yeah. Hollis, Queens. By the way, what do you think of when you hear this Man, song? I think of uh, Marcellus a little bit. But um, I just say. I think of Die Hard. They used the uh, song in Die Hard. In, okay. in, 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 remember that? And, bonus, and now bonus, I can't stop. Bonus, Every time I hear it, I think question. of Die Hard. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Ooh. What? No doubt. I don't know why, but it is. I think because of that song, and because it, it came out in the hot during the holidays. I think. Yeah, it is. Somehow, Die Hard is it. There's, there's. It's a Wonderful Life, a Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, a Christmas Story, right. and Die Hard. Those are the Christmas <laughs> movies. Harden to the Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker, you can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests join me on the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Ravens snapped their three-game losing streak last night, running all over the Cowboys to the tune of 294 yards. With a win, Baltimore improved to 7-5, and five, keeping their playoff hopes alive as they currently sit in the ninth seed in the AFC. You know, they're, they're vying with either the, probably the Colts or the Titans to see who's going to get in, right, depending on who wins that division, who's going to be the wild card. 7-5, um, and five, big difference between that and 6-6 six and six when you're chasing 8-4 and four teams, obviously. Uh, are the Ravens back to being the Ravens? Was that a success? I think I think so. They're they're heading in that direction. You know, it, part of their uh, futility in recent weeks was a, a, the, a, an issue not just of COVID, right? And by the way, before you test positive for COVID, you may be feeling some kind of an effect. The previous week, because the incubation period for this, you know, before the, 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 the when you're asymptomatic, or or or. <laughs> Maybe you're not actually asymptomatic. Maybe one of the sem symptoms is some kind of like lethargy or brain fog or whatever. But but when, before you're showing obvious symptoms, it could be like, what is it, up to two weeks or 10 days? It's something crazy. Not like the flu a couple days. Makes it an insidious disease because by the time, you know, because you, you, by the time you figure out you have it, you're in contact with so many people. Like, that's why we never really shut down in this country. We should have. But that's why social distancing and, and limited shutdowns and stuff and mask wearing is important because it's otherwise the disease is, is tricky. Even with those precautions, it's tricky. But anyway, um, so I wonder how much of that was going on, you know, before they were diagnosed, before Lamar was diagnosed. But at any rate, they had a tough part of the schedule come up. You know, they had the Bengals and some easy games early. And they started with the Browns, and the Browns didn't listen. It, it, you know, with COVID, no practice, no nothing. <laughs> you know, the new coach, Baker's fourth coach in two years, and and uh, you know, because the the end of his was Hugh Jackson in the second half of his rookie year, and then uh, Hugh Jackson, and then Greg Williams in the second half of his rookie year, and so that's one year, and then and then um, uh, uh, I'm forgetting already uh, after, before Stefanski. What's his name, Raj, before Stefanski with the Browns? But at any rate, that was three, and then Stefanski. So by the week one of this year, Baker Mayfield was on his fourth coach in two years and one game. So you knew without practice and everything, which you really need with a new system, the whole thing, with, uh, Browns are going to look bad, and the Ravens were one of the best teams in the NFL last year. In fact, until the playoffs, we thought maybe they were the best team in the NFL. 14-2 and two team. Lamar Jackson, MVP. So they destroy the Browns. They beat, they beat teams like the Bengals. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, who's on the schedule? Steelers, Colts, Titans, Steelers. Ah, it starts to get tough. And they started losing those games. And the fact that that coincided with COVID was bad for the Ravens. By the way, they did beat the Colts along the way. 
Like, they lost three in a row in four of their last five, but, it, but you know, they lost to the Steelers in a tough game, and then they came back and beat the Colts the next week, and then they had the three-game losing streak. So they're coming out of that, and don't forget they're on a short week because they played last Wednesday, and yesterday's Tuesday, so they don't have normal rest. It's a little short. And now they're playing a Cowboys team that's worst in the league against the run, and the Ravens run it better than anybody. It's number one versus dead last, number 32. So you would expect, if the Ravens are going right, uh, you know, a big mismatch there, and there was. But understand, the, Cowboy, the Cowboys give up, on average, about 160, 160-something yards a game. The Ravens went for 294. The Ravens almost went for 300, so they basically you know, ran for twice as much as the Cowboys give up on average. Well, that's good for the Ravens, and the reason they do that is because Lamar broke some big runs. I mean, if Tyreek Hill is not the fastest land mammal, then Lamar Jackson is. Boy, he has some special kind of jets. But it's not just Lamar or Ingram. It's Dobbins and Evans, right? Like Edwards, Evans. Anyway, the point is they got four guys who can run the ball. And they can play defense. I mean, even during the losing streak, other than giving up 30 to the Titans, they really don't give up very many points. So, and, and now Lamar is, is a guy who's going to miss some throws so far in his career. He's not the most accurate passer, but he threw a dime to Hollywood Brown in the end zone, didn't he? Yeah, I think, I think if you're a Ravens fan, you st- you know, you're not breathing a sigh of relief yet, but you're like, okay, you're cautiously optimistic about the rest of this season. Meantime, Steven Silas, Rockets head coach, was asked if he'd had a conversation with James Harden since Harden's return to the team. Have you um, had any conversations with James since, since he's been back in Houston? I have not. Well, there it goes. I think we could have probably set that up a little better, Raj. But anyway, the point is... That was short and sweet, <laughs> man. I think it was, per- I think it was I, set up perfectly. I, I know, but I set up the sound... But, Raj, I set up the sound by saying he was asked this, and then the question was in the thing, and the, all you heard was him say no. So for that, yeah, I could say no. If we just uh, played no. the no, yeah, there would have been a one-second no. sound bite. We like to play sound on this show. It's fun. I see. Better than the sound of my <laughs> mellifluous voice. Uh, Houston Rockets superstar guard James Harden reportedly wanted the Rockets to hire Tyron Lue as their new head coach this offseason following the departure of Mike D'Antoni. Uh, so the question is, is the best fit for Harden? The Sixers, the Celtics, or the Nets? Those are the teams uh, who are, whose you know, name he's been tied to in terms of trades. Let me just say, um, Dinwiddie and Levert, given when their contracts end, et cetera, and, and how many draft picks the Nets have, I don't see that working the more, I lo- more closely I look at it with Harden. You look at the Celtics, what are the Celtics going to give up? You think Jalen Brown's enough? I like Jalen Brown a lot. I don't think he's going to be the centerpiece of a trade for Harden. Maybe. I don't think so. So that leaves the Sixers and Tobias Harris and draft picks and, and, and Thibel and stuff. They ain't going to get it done. Would you trade Embiid or Simmons? Right? That's what it comes down to. And, and obviously, people are focused more on, on Simmons. Would you trade him for Harden? And early on, I thought, yeah, you have to. Harden's too dangerous offensively. You pair him with Embiid. But then there's a guy named uh, Derek Bodner who writes for The Athletic, covers Philadelphia sports for The Athletic. He had a good point. Saw it on Twitter. It actually, I thought, huh, it, my misgivings grew because, of course, every listen, neither side wants to do that deal, really. Like, I don't want to give up Simmons. I don't want to give up Harden, right? But, I mean, fans of those teams. But, I went from just having misgivings into saying, no, I actually wouldn't do the trade. And here's what Bodner wrote. He said, James Harden has put pressure on teams, on the Rockets, to to trade for guys he wanted to play with, right? Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. And uh, how long did that last? Even when they're putting out statements, you know, James Harden and Russell Westbrook are actually still best friends. In fact, they're not even friends. They're brothers. In fact, they're not even brothers. They were separated at birth. Right? Like, okay, guys, we know you're close. We get it, we get it, we get it. But you didn't want to play together. You didn't want to play with him, James. And you didn't want to play with Chris Paul. 
So if you're a Sixers fan, you sure he's going to want to play with Embiid? And do you think Embiid's going to want to sit around and watch James Harden take 15 threes a game? How many years left does James Harden have in his prime? And by prime, I mean as an MVP caliber player. He's 32. You want to give him two more years as an MVP caliber player? You think you think Harden and Embiid are going to win uh, a championship in the next two years? Because if you don't, now you don't have Ben Simmons. See how that works? I don't think I'd do the deal. I don't think I would. You know who I think? Here's a dark horse who, um, who uh, no one's talking about, but it's the kind of market where no one's ever going to sign there. They, because they're well run, they never have like the number one overall pick. But maybe they could look and think, we could do something with this guy. Even though Harden's not going to want to go, it would be a gutsy move. What if Indiana? Think about how much talent they have on the team. They have some assets on that team. What if Indiana could make a move for Harden? To say nothing, of course, of Milwaukee. Because if Harden went to Milwaukee, remember when I, I said uh, Giannis hasn't won a championship because if you're a big, you need a guy who's a non-big and as great as you if you want to win a championship. Like, I don't know, starting with Wilt Chamberlain, right, Jerry West, or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who has six championships, none without either Oscar Robertson or Magic Johnson, the greatest point guard of all time, and then the new greatest point guard of all time. That's what Kareem needed. And he straddled the, 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 the uh, uh, pre-modern era and the modern era. And I define that as the absorption of the ABA teams into the NBA, the adoption of the three-point line. Like, that's when the game really changed, right? In, in terms of our memories, at the very least, f- franchise expansion, etc., the modern NBA really started with that, the absorption of the ABA teams, the adoption of the three-point line. Kareem played in both eras. Greatest point guard of the first era was Oscar Robertson. Of the next was Magic Johnson. Played with both of them. Won six titles, zero without them. Shaq played with Penny. Not good enough. Penny Hardaway at his prime. Not good enough. Kobe was good enough. Kobe was as good as Shaq, more or less. Dwayne Wade was as good as that version of Shaq, more or less. That's the four that Shaq won. Zero without either Kobe Bryant or Dwayne Wade. Zero. Anthony Davis didn't sniff the finals on good teams with Drew Holiday and guys who could play. Didn't sniff the final. Got with LeBron James. He's a big, oh, there are guys as good as him. Better. The freak needs a guy like that. Harden's that guy. Harden's as good as the Greek freak, more or less. I love Drew Holiday. Holiday ain't it. I mean, look, I just brought it up. AD played with Holiday. What'd they do? And Holiday can defend it. He can shoot in the clutch, and he can play make. He can do everything you want, and, but he's not quite a superstar. Holiday and Middleton, they're good. They're both very good. Not enough. The freak needs a dude as good as him. That's James Harden. Would they swing something for Harden? Could they? Do they have the assets to do it outside of the freak? Terrence in Wisconsin, you're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Hey, Max, how's it going? Go ahead, hey, Terrence. Listen, I got a question for you because I've been watching Ben all year. I'm a huge Steeler fan, 48 years old. I have been since my parents used to go to Latrobe, Pennsylvania every year when I was a kid. I actually got a picture of my mom mm-hmm. kissing me. Training kissing camp. Me yeah. Green. Um, you know, Ben's been a Oh yeah, Mean Joe Green. When we were kids, because I'm the I'm 47, you're 48. When when we were kids, Mean Joe Green was like, arguably at times the most famous football player in the yeah, world. Yeah, he go was. Ahead. Hey, listen, I, my question about Ben: What do you think about him this year? This is why I ask you because in the in the past, I don't know, 10 years, he's been a warrior. He's a guy that my dad used to hate, but always would love. I never hated him. He's a warrior. It would take three guys to get him down. This year, I just see. He seems to be a little gun shy. I mean, he's not, you know, he had surgery. Of course, that's why, but for God's sake, come on, Ben. I mean, you got to have a. No, I, okay, I, I have a different view of Roethlisberger. I think Roethlisberger's played smart football. He's gotten rid of the ball by and large quickly, and he's playing without a running game. So considering his age, 38, the fact that he's coming off a catastrophic injury having missed a year, and he doesn't have a running game, I think he's having a great season by those standards. By the standards just of the NFL, He is certainly an upper 50 percentile quarterback, maybe even a top third type quarterback. Is he top 10? Mm, 
That's a good question. Is, he, is Ben Roethlisberger a top 10 quarterback right now? Arguably. Arguably. In the AFC, the top three are obviously, as I've been saying, Mahomes, Watson, and uh, Josh Allen at this moment. Uh, and in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers. Right now, Drew Brees is hurt, but I think you'd include him there. Russell Wilson, obviously. So before you can even say anything, Roethlisberger, it, you know, there are six guys that you immediately put ahead of him. And then if we thought about it, I, I think we'd come up with some more. But I think he's having a very good year considering uh, – a great year considering the circumstances – and a good year even by NFL standards. He's, not, he's changed as a player, as aging players should. You know, in baseball, guys who lose their fastball, they get better control, so they walk fewer hitters, but they're in the strike zone more, so they give up more home runs. You see, as they age, strikeouts go down, walks go down, home runs go up, right? In the NFL, a big, strong quarterback like Roethlisberger, who's always taking hits, if he wants to last, start getting rid of the ball quicker, particularly if you can't run the ball. Pastor Chris in West Virginia. Yes, sir, Mac. You're on the Max Kellerman Show, Pastor Chris. Thank Go ahead. Thank you so much for taking my call, buddy. Real, just a quick question. Been a Eagles fan since Randall Cunningham. Should, <laughs> should I jump ship? And if so, where do you recommend I go? No, I would stick with my team if I were you, and I'll tell you why. If you've been an Eagles fan since Randall Cunningham, I'm suggesting firing Peterson and Roseman and moving on from Wentz as soon as you can, right? And yet those dudes, along with Nick Foles, brought you a championship. Guys, Eagles fans have been waiting their entire lives for a Super Bowl. You saw it, and it wasn't that long ago. So even though things are bad right now, were I an Eagles fan, I wouldn't jump ship. Now... Uh, as a Giants fan, I can tell you we have a big tent policy. Anyone who wants to become a Giants fan, I welcome them as, as the voice of Giants fans. Raj, I welcome uh, reformed yes. Eagles fans. Nevertheless, I, I have to, as a, as a radio host for all of the American people, uh, I have to uh, suggest or maybe even insist that Pastor Chris keep the faith in West Virginia. Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Mitch in New Jersey, you're on the air. Max, how's it going? Happy holiday. Um, Happy holiday to you, Mitch. Let me go speak a phone. Yeah, um, I agree with the Eagles. I mean, the, the, the GM, the coach, Wentz. I mean, he doesn't have the. He's kind of sometimes golf reminds me of Wentz, but at least Wentz got some good wide receivers. But you know what? Team be great there. Any coach to come, and they definitely got to get, get a coach. You should have had one after last Monday. The Chargers. Well, they get a good coach, young coach. That team is sitting pretty. They got the. They got to get a coach. By the way, how about this? Just switch coach. When the Patriots came, they beat them 45 to nothing. Warren Sharp told everybody of Sharp Analytics. You can hear him here on the Max Kellerman Show bi-weekly. Warren Sharp told everyone this is the biggest coaching mismatch you can get. Uh, Anthony Lynn's got to go. If, uh, now, they won 45 nothing. Understand, the Patriots don't have any talent on the defense or the offense. <laughs> and they have a new quarterback coming off a catastrophic injury who couldn't be more different than the old quarterback, so they have to change their system, right? They beat them 45-0. The Chargers have talent on both sides of the ball and a great young quarterback in Justin Herbert. They lost 45-0. Now imagine this. If you gave Belichick the Chargers and gave Anthony Lynn the Patriots, what would the score of that game have been? 45-0 the other way is what I'm going to tell you. Um, if, if Belichick beat that Chargers team, on paper it's not close. The Chargers have way more talent. 45-0. That's a 90-point coaching swing. News from Max Kellerman Nation. Mitch just hit us up on the Dr. Pepper call-in line. And by the way, it is true that Anthony Lynn is an African-American head coach in a league that is predominantly African-American and yet has, is way underrepresented in the coaching ranks that way, racially. And so I, 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 it harkens back to what Rush Limbaugh, believe it or not, said years ago for which he was fired on ESPN. Um, he said that Donovan McNabb is overrated because he believed that the media was desirous of seeing a black quarterback succeed. And number one, I disagreed with his football content. I thought, no, McNabb's not overrated. What are you talking about? But the other part, because the media is desirous of seeing a black quarterback succeed, I thought to myself at the time, 
Well, okay, shouldn't they be? If you have an excluded group who's been oppressed and denied opportunity and is therefore underrepresented in, 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 a, in, a, in an influential and prestigious, important position of leadership, shouldn't a, a good person and a good American think, I'd like to see that group succeed in that position, members of that group succeed in that position. So, it's, so at least whether or not, that doesn't mean if, if, if the percentage of coaches who are African-American balances out to what it should be, if it's 70% of the league and that's 70% of coaches, th that doesn't mean now we've fixed, we've solved racism, or even necessarily that it's a reflection of a healthy society that, oh, look at, but at least the NFL could hold its head up high on that issue, right? So, so Anthony Lynn is an African-American coach. He should be fired. He's terrible. Does that mean that, that would, there'll be one less African-American coach in the league? Not necessarily. <laughs> Not if African-American coaches. <laughs> the Max Kellerman Show on ESPN Radio, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker. <clears throat> you can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Where else could James Harden go if not the Brooklyn Nets or the Philadelphia 76ers? Could the Bucks make a move? I brought up the Indiana Pacers earlier because uh, Oladipo and T.J. Warren and Sabonis and Brogdon, they have some interesting pieces. The Max Kellerman Show is presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests join us in the Shell Penzo Performance Park. No bias. I really like football. Just facts. Don't get it crooked here. What I'm saying. Max's NFL Power Rankings. Ooh. All right, man. Everybody's wondering. A certain team yeah, right. that was undefeated got knocked off, so we don't know how far to drop. Maybe it's a spot or two, but let's get it started, Matlock. Five. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the count. Who would I have you last week at five, Raj? Five last week, Max. They drop out and are replaced by a falling what? Pittsburgh Steelers team. I don't want to overreact to the Steelers' loss and drop them out of the top five, but they could not. Look, look again, three games in mm -hmm. 13 days. Short rest after a Ravens game, right? Like, there's a lot of reasons to, to understand why they lost. And by the way, 109, 2 and 1, I think it was, in 112 career performances, as, you know, in the, in the Roethlisberger mm -hmm. era, where if they're winning by two touchdowns at any point in the game, they're 109, 2 and yeah. 1. I mean, it's ridiculous. But they lost, and they lost because when you play three games in 13 days, when you're after the Ravens game, which is emotional, even if the Ravens don't have players, all that, and, and, and you're on a short week, you tire out as the game goes along. I think that's what happened at Pittsburgh. But, Raj, I got to drop them. Because they couldn't run yeah. the ball. Yeah, That's and you've been bad news. even before then. Even though you had number two, you were telling people why they weren't your number one. So that moves us on to the next spot. Four. Ah, ah, ah. Number four yeah. last week, you had those Seattle Seahawks. I know Keyshawn's loved them for a long time. What about you? The Buffalo Bills Ooh. replaced them. Josh Allen. There's something about sometimes I like the way I like to chart and identify when perception changes without people really realizing that, that a moment just occurred where perception changed. Let me give you an example. When Mike Tyson knocked out Franz Bota oh, yeah. way back when, good South African contender. The Buffalo. Um, I realized at that point, yep, the Buffalo, that's right. I realized at that point, Tyson for the first time in his career would be an underdog in a fight. He, did, he, he was gonna be the underdog against Lennox. And the reason was, though he knocked Bota out, Bota was outboxing him for a while. And in fact, people forget because it's funny how your perception changes in, in incremental ways that you don't really realize. Tyson's whole thing was not just that he knocked you out, it's that he dominated every second of the fight, right? All of a sudden I saw, wait, this dude is out boxing Tyson? He's gonna be an underdog against Lennox. And, and, and I like those moments like, oh look, our perception of this universe just changed. Our perception of Josh Allen just changed because he was up and down this year. He looked good, he looked great, he looked okay. Then the performance he just had, it's like you look around, you say he's top five active QBs and QBR, because Dak's not active right now. He is, he is every year jumping 10% in completion percentage and a ratio of one in his touchdown interception, meaning one to one, two to one, now three to one touchdown interception. And I realized coming out of that game, he's the third best quarterback in the AFC. He's top three in his conference. 
Um, the Bills can also do their like they can play defense. They can catch the ball. They can run the ball. They can do a lot of stuff, and they got a good coach. All right, Bills and you want to hear about uh, Keyshawn and Max's conversation on uh, who's the third best quarterback in the AFC? Take a listen to the podcast. All right, the next one, Matlock. Three. Ah, ah, ah. That's right. You... Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers, uh, Raj, are three. I'm just going to end the suspense right now. Where did you I have had, them last you week? You had the Packers in there. You had the Saints at number three, and the Packers weren't ranked, so you're really impressed with that victory. It's not that they were facing a good team. They obviously mm. weren't. But the Packers' defense is starting to play. And now you think about this. Aaron Rodgers is the next thing to Patrick Mahomes. And some people think that he should be the MVP favorite right now. I don't. I think he's you – know, because Mahomes has more weapons, so somehow that means Mahomes is less valuable. Mm. It's ridiculous. Um, they're almost the same guy in terms of their ability on the field. Where there's an edge, I would give a very slight one to Mahomes. Uh, but Rodgers, what does he have, 30 – how many touchdowns now Dang against up. four interceptions? Mahomes is 31-2, and two, by the way. Um, but Rodgers is great. Jones has, is, gives them a real running game. They're getting good run blocking up front in addition to that and pass protection up front. The line is playing well. And, and, and now their defense is coming along. They got a tight end who can catch passes. They got some receivers. Like, the Green Bay Packers look like they did early in the season when they – is that the best team in the NFC? I really like the way all they right, look. All right, all right. What do you got next for us, Madeline? Ah, ah, ah. Number two obviously was held most of the season by the previously undefeated Steelers. Max, who takes over that spot? The New Orleans Saints, and they're doing it without Drew Brees. The Saints' defenses look spectacular, something I've tried to emphasize for people recently. And, I, and I, I brought up the Quan Alexander trade. I haven't heard anyone even mention that, really. But because at the trade deadline, oh, wait, you picked up a nice defensive piece. Remember, the Niners let him go because he had a big contract. He had a big contract because he's really good, <laughs> okay? And, they, and, and the Saints bring him in because he's uh, versatile. He could do a bunch of things. And he, I think it had a ripple effect on the defense. So the defense for the Saints is really the story right now. And yet, in addition to that, they finally have a number two receiver in Emmanuel Sanders. They still got Kamara out of the backfield. And this is all happening without Drew Brees, but it's giving um, Taysom Hill valuable experience yeah. under center. Uh, when Drew Brees gets back, I think this is the second best team in football and the best right. in the okay. NFC. So obviously that gives us the, the next one. Obviously held most of the season by this team. What, what is it? One. Ah, ah, ah. Not most of the mm. season, Raj. All of it. Who'd I have last the week? Chiefs. The Chiefs. All the, the week season. before the Chiefs. The week before that. I told you before the season started. The Kansas mm. City Chiefs, the reigning and defending yes, Super sir. Bowl champs. Well, early on, they didn't look good. They didn't look good early on in the playoffs last year. If you did power rankings after week one, you'd say, well, not the Chiefs. After, week, after the second playoff game, not the Chiefs. You know, the Texans, they're down 10-0. The, the Titans, they're down in the game. And then the Niners, who were considered the best team in football. They were down in all those games, double digits. Came back and won them all. And same thing early in the season. Well, the Chiefs are this. Well, you know, they had to come back on the Chargers. And then later on, they let the Bucks back into the game. Yeah, they're letting this, and they have to do that. In the meantime, they just win, win, win. It's as though they're toying with the NFL. I think it's the first team I've ever seen that toys with the NFL. Like a cat and mouse. They're bored, and so they have the mouse by the tail, and they let it go for a second, and they grab it again. Chiefs are the best team in football. They got the best player I've ever seen at the quarterback position. They're number one still. You know what? By the way, if they lose their next two games in a row, you know who I'm going to have number one after that, Raj? Who who you have? Kansas City Chiefs. When I see them lose in the playoffs, I'll accept it. Not until then. Up next is last take which is your take. 888-SAY-ESPN. The Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80, and on your smart speaker, last take coming up. You can reach me at 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776, brought to you by Shell V Power Nitro Plus, premium gasoline. You heard first take? At least it's good to hear your voice finally, because yeah. I know on first take, I only hear you on the intro and outro. <laughs> <laughs> now hear Max's last take. Brooklyn J in Brooklyn. You're on the Max Kellerman Show, ESPN Radio. Max, thank you. Uh, it, it's, a pre- it's a 
privilege and honor to speak to you. And all yes. honesty, yes. for real, I love, I love what you do, and I want to thank you for what you do. And uh, thank I, you, thank, I thank ESPN for opening up the phone lines to give me an opportunity. Um, I have been saying this, and I, I think I've been screaming this about the same time as you've been screaming Carson Wentz is not that cook. Um, I have been screaming that out of all those guys, Josh Allen was going to be the one that prevailed. And the reason why I say that is because in college, you know, you, you, you see certain things, and you just he just had that look. And every year he steps forward – to what you know, what, what what the people want. The first year he stayed in, in, in inside. He basically learned how to uh, you know read defenses, in, and he took his licking. And he said, you know what, Mr. Brady, I'm coming to take over this uh, division. So you know. I'm over yeah, he did. By the way, he did that. He did that. And the second year he got better. I keep saying, touchdown to interception, one to one year one, two to one year two, three to one year three. Completion percentage, 50% year one, 60% year two, 70% year three. Um, he, he took over the division. Uh, we'll see what the Dolphins have to say about that and what Tua turns into uh, and what Belichick can do with a full season of guys who aren't opting out for COVID, et cetera, and with a quarterback in the system more than just, you know, for a few months. But Josh Allen's been tremendous. I did not think he was going to be this. I didn't think he was accurate enough. He had a big arm, but I didn't think he was accurate enough. He is. John in Arizona, you're on the Max Keller Show. Max. Hey, Max. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm glad you guys were just talking about Josh Allen because it kind of goes with this. Um, earlier you said that Josh Allen, I understand he is pro- uh, progressing every year, um, and that is awesome. I'm glad that he's doing that. But you also have to look at the situation he's in in Buffalo versus what Carson Wentz is in. You said earlier that um, Josh Allen is progressing, and and a lot of that, not a lot of that, but it is due to the situation he's in in Buffalo. He's got a coaching staff behind him. I get it, but but hold on. Time out one second. I get it. I agree. But I use the analogy of two kids equally bright. One goes to Stanford. One goes to community college, right? After four years, you might call the one who went to Stanford smarter, quote unquote, right? Because they have a, this compounding advantage of a better education. So at a certain point, your surroundings actually can make you better. Meantime, it's tough to blame his surroundings, Wentz's surroundings, on his failure because, I mean, first of all, he was hurt, and that has something to do with it. Maybe his surroundings, yes, his environment. But that environment won the Super Bowl, and Wentz got them in a position to have home field. But the bottom line is Nick Foles is the one who did it. And the following year, that team was 5-6 and six with Wentz. He got hurt again. Foles came in, and just like that, they caught fire. And they won out or they got into the playoffs, and they won on the road against the Bears, and they very nearly won on the road against the Saints. That was Foles, not Wentz. Took a six and f- five and six team and did that. The locker room wasn't responding to Carson Wentz. I don't think you, could, you, you can point fingers at his surroundings. Obviously, it doesn't help, and yes, it has been a positive influence for Josh Allen, probably. Nevertheless, this is the situation they're in. Ben in New Orleans. Hey, how you doing, sir? You got 30 okay, seconds, I love Ben. This show. Uh, a couple of things I want to say real quick. I know you talked about your favorite Christmas movies. Have you seen The Bishop's Wife starring yeah. Cary Grant and Loretta Young? I have not seen The Bishop's Wife. Please check actually. it out. It's terrific. All right. My question right. to you is, is right? do you think the Saints make it to the Super Bowl? I do right now. The only thing I think can stop them, if the Seattle defense comes on um, – or if Aaron Rodgers just does things that no one can account for. But it, my favorites right now out of the NFC are the New Orleans Saints. And when Drew Brees comes back, this might be his last shot to do it. I think it'll be very.